I just did a video on training frequency, aka how many times you hit muscle groups per week, link it below and link it up there. But how you lift weights is also a consideration. And the answer is with love and care because weights have feelings too. There are a few videos on this topic already as it is a very common concept for discussion. And I would like to add my contribution in 2019 and hopefully to help some of you understand this question and be effective within your training. But first let's have a discussion, a bit of dinner and a chat because when it comes to lifting tempo, what's the rush? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. As with many vast topics like this, I cannot cover every single variable relating to a topic in a single YouTube video. But initial considerations are, for example, your lifting intensity. If you are using a heavier weight and lower rep scheme, for example, your lifting tempo may well look different to if you are doing a German volume training, 10 sets of 10, lower intensity, higher repetition and volume protocol. And the instant considerations would be safety, the execution of the lift and how much weight you are using will affect these issues. As with all videos like this, please apply to yourself and shock horror, there is more research needed for this topic. In areas, for example, combining tempos of lifting within sessions and also on slower and faster tempos themselves. And so we have a meta-analysis by Krieger, Ogbon and Schoenfeld from 2015, which looks at the very limited amount of research we have into this area, where a total of eight studies with 204 total participants, there was no difference in hypertrophy between lifting durations of two to six seconds when using dynamic constant external resistance, typical free weights and machines. This was the conclusion of the researchers. From a practical standpoint, it would seem that a fairly wide range of repetition durations can be employed if the primary goal is to maximize muscle growth. Findings suggest that training at volitionally, be sure I said that wrong, very slow durations, greater than 10 seconds per repetition, is inferior from a hypertrophy standpoint although a lack of controlled studies on the topic makes it difficult to draw definitive conclusions. And so let's start with slow repetitions. And to be clear, you need to think of the eccentric phase of a lift versus the concentric, AKA the positive versus the negative, the stretch versus the squeeze, or the boring versus check this out. And so I will be clear when I discuss this in relation to the specific portion of a dynamic contraction. We can think about time under tension with slower repetitions and time under tension does sound like what appears to be watching an egg with a mouth talking about exercise science. However, as I've said in other videos, it refers to this. What seems possible is that high time under tensions may promote greater hypertrophy in type one muscle fibers. By nature, slow twitch fibers are fatigue resistance as opposed to type two fibers. And so it is a valid concept that keeping muscle under tension may benefit you with your hypertrophy, but this can be vastly exaggerated in social media. And it is not some superior and ultimate hack for muscle gains. We should view our training over our active lifetime. So of course, we can use time under tension as a tool in our training. So you can use time under tension but it's not compulsory. And those statements are not contradictory. That is the correct analytical way to present information. But the issue that comes up is really how long should this time under tension be? Perhaps it can actually be overhyped in terms of these super slow five to six second negatives in terms of the additional significance to, for example, using a two second controlled negative and therefore keeping a level of tension on the muscle during the eccentric phase. And another reason you may use a slower time under tension method may be just because change equals adaptation. If you're using multiple protocols for building muscle as you can, as is valid. If you are optimizing all the time, you are not adapting. If you are changing, you can create new stimulus on the muscle. It's just another idea for you to internalize and perhaps introduce into your training. And I just wanna say, I know I look a bit tired and drained at the moment. It is a very stressful time in the UK this month. The Wagatha Christie story got me losing sleep. And let's look at a faster tempo and a fast concentric contraction is an extra stressor on the muscle because it has the ability to recruit additional motor units to perform that movement at speed. With a larger intensity, i.e. the closer to your one repetition max or a higher RPE, you're going to want to execute the lift effectively and safely. And in addition, a faster concentric contraction would lend itself to the activation of type two muscle fibers, those harder to reach type two muscle fibers, type two fibers, which are more sensitive to muscle hypertrophy. Type two fibers are essentially made to grow 
grow in size. If we're thinking of muscle growth as hitting a spectrum of muscle fibers, then using multiple protocols, perhaps over time, does make sense. A higher volume, lower intensity approach we could then also use time under tension to focus more on those type one fibers. If you're using a higher intensity, for example, heavier weight, lower set protocol, you may then perhaps not focus so much on time under tension because you are actually hitting type two fibers with that additional force, but you're also recruiting type one fibers to get to that point based on the Henneman principle where muscle fibers are recruited in order. And so when you think about the concentric contraction, it theoretically makes sense to use some form of faster movement to really recruit muscle fibers and motor units. And you can perform that safely throughout the lift. However, when it comes to the eccentric contraction, that's interesting because going too fast may have a safety risk to it. And in addition, the disadvantage of going too fast through the negative means that you're really minimizing any sort of muscular tension through that phase and just letting gravity do the work. So that would be a disadvantage when it comes to muscle hypertrophy. So you need to think of that eccentric as having that balance of control against the force of gravity, not letting the weight just drop, but at the same time, not going too slow, which may affect other factors of the lift. And so again, it is a literal balancing act. Another factor you can consider during your concentric phase and using a faster speed, maybe to help you get through a sticking point in the lift. We have strength curves within lifts and certain points of a lift, which are naturally harder, but there may be certain points of a lift, which are sticking points for you that you struggle to get through. And so focusing on using a faster tempo through the concentric Centric may actually help you as a contribution to getting over these sticking points. And so here's a practical application. Basically, it depends and you must apply the concept to you. And we have a real lack of research at this point. However, here is a solid guideline for you. When it comes to eccentric contraction, think about lowering the weight with control, keeping a level of muscular tension, but not compromising safety or mechanics of your lift by going too slow or too fast. The exact speed will be unique to you and vary depending on the exercise and variables such as load for that exercise. And with a concentric, you can use a relatively faster tempo, more explosive movement. The analogy of lifting like a spring is very valid. You can think of the eccentric as coiling the spring in a more controlled way and the concentric as the explosion. But as with everything, don't overthink it. Make sure you have the underlying base principles of muscle hypertrophy in your training and that you're hammering on them consistently over time. Finn.